Hey folks, David here. I'm going to do a video on the complete restoration of a Lionel 3656 cattle corral and the cattle car and also the 3472 automatic refrigerated milk car and the car platform. Here is a couple of videos of uh, when I originally bought these items. First is the cattle corral and here is the milk jug platform when I bought it and the cattle car and here is the milk jug car. I'll start with the operation of the 3472 milk car and how it works. And what it does is you put milk jugs in the top of it through this little door here and they come down and then you press the button and this guy here shoots them out onto the platform. Show you real quick. Sometimes you have to shake the car a little bit to get the milk jugs to go in there and line up. This uses the uh, Lionel UCS track with the controller. I love how these old mechanical uh, Lionel accessories work with simple relays and levers and things. I got this working, but it took a little bit of effort to get it to work. And sometimes what happens with these is the milk bottles come down and they get stuck in there. And they get stuck in there and then it doesn't work. Or that happens too. So it takes a little bit of work sometimes to get these to work properly. You can go online and find the manual or service manual for it. And it gives you a couple tips which uh, I find quite helpful. So what it tells you, if you're having trouble with it unloading properly or the milk jugs getting stuck in there, there's a couple adjustments you can make on this. And one of them is you can bend this tab right here. You can bend that out if you need to to get it to push the milk jugs out further. On this side of it, sometimes this tab needs to be bent in This tab right here can be bent at an angle inward a little bit. So you have a little bit of space in there. So that's, that's, that's another adjustment that you can make on it. And what worked for me is the milk jugs kind of get stuck on this little guy here. And I took him off of there and filed his arm and his leg down a little bit. There you go, if you can see that. So if you get a file, it's a little bit dirty. If you get a file, or they even say in the uh, service manual, a razor blade, and kind of cut that off of there a little bit to make this part a little bit uh, smaller or flatter, and then the milk jugs won't get stuck in there. Put the cover on this and then show you. Yeah. 
So this needs a little bit of work yet. Um, what you don't want to do is put oil or anything like that in here. Just clean it real good. I mean, maybe just a, a tiny, like one drop at the most, but just clean this really good with, uh, you know, your scratch brush or whatever. Um, you know, I was using this on here, clean that up. Uh, graphite seemed to work okay. Um, I need to make a little bit more adjustments and some of this wiring, well, my wiring here needs a little bit of work. I had to re-solder and put some shrink tubing on this wire here. These, these wires are pretty brittle and the insulation kind of cracks off so you got to make sure that they're insulated well. And I actually did put an extra wire on there to go down to the truck. So it's worth it to replace it. And it, it looks like it's kind of long, but there's a reason for that. As this one here is kind of long. There's a screw right here in the bottom. You take that screw off and then you lift this up and there's a notch in the back. And that's how this whole assembly comes off. So if you needed to take this off for some reason to get to it, uh, it's worth it to have you know longer wires on here so that you can work on it and then you just kind of tuck them in best you can when you put this together you want to make sure that you're not down here getting in the way of the truck okay we'll play with this a little bit more I think I got it in pretty good working order What I need to do is take this apart. Uh, I'm gonna take this apart and get it painted. So here's a couple pictures of uh, before I sandblasted and after I sandblasted the uh, cattle corral. I did the milk jug platform after this, so I didn't have any pictures of it, but they're all the same, it's no big deal. So here's a couple pictures of uh, the sandblasting. After sandblasting everything, then I had to paint it. And I had to paint the yellow, and then I painted the green, and then I painted the white. So this is just the uh, railings for the uh, cattle corral. Okay, we'll let that dry. Put another coat on it tomorrow. I finally got everything painted here for these two projects. Uh, this is the stockyard or the cattle loader, whatever you want to call it. I guess officially it's called the stockyard. And the, the milk car platform, the loading platform here. So this took me about two months, maybe three months to get this all painted. And the reason is I'm in Pennsylvania and right now it's March. I started on this in January. And for instance, like all the green stuff, I had to sandblast it and then primer it, let it dry for a day, flip it over, primer the other side, wait for it to dry for a day, then paint green on one side, let it dry for a day, turn it over, paint it, green and then put a second coat on it so in other words like these three pieces took six days to get painted and then you know the white that took six days to do that and the yellow six days to do the yellow so that's like 18 days and that's not in a row because I had to wait until there was a day when it was warm enough to paint. So, finally got all this painted. Now I got to put it back together. Uh, in case I did not mention, I got the paints here from uh, Henning's Trains in Lansdale. They are working on making uh, all the Lionel original colors. So, if you need, uh, if you're restoring a Lionel accessory, uh, you can give them a call or stop at their hobby shop there in Lansdale and they should have the paints that you need or if they don't they'll mix them up they'll figure it out 
Okay, so I got to get this together. This one, I have to go back and look at some photos that I'll probably put at the beginning of this video, but I got to figure out how this relay goes in and some of these parts, because I don't remember how I took it apart. So this is going to be easy here. We can put this together real quick. Okay, that's just a matter of getting these tabs into the slots there. Okay, that's just a matter of getting the tabs into the slots there. And then you gotta bend them over on the bottom here. Okay, so this platform is actually adjustable. You can raise that up if you need to. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to that. Looks pretty good. Looks a lot better than it did. Um, so we're done with that for now. This, I have to go back and look at the pictures and see how this goes together. I'm really glad I took some pictures of this before I took it apart. And I also have the manual for it. So the part that was in question was, first of all, you know, how does this screw go in? I wasn't sure if it went in from the top or the bottom. And then which way does this relay go? So you can see that goes there. And um, on the coil here, there is a wire that comes out of the bottom. And there's one that comes out of the side. So the one that comes out of the side here is what goes to ground. And these are cut a little bit short. I'm gonna to have to extend these wires on there, but we'll get to that. So this goes in here. And that's gonna fall out probably before I get this together. That's all right. Um, and then that goes on here. I'll put that on later. Put the railings on here. And again, they just kind of go into the slots. Yeah, that's going to come right off of there. Let me fix that later. Okay, I scratched up my paint a little bit here on the bottom. Get these in there, but get those tabs in there and bend them over. Put the front piece in. And what I've been doing is grabbing the pliers here, pulling that. Sorry, I got my hand in the way. There you go. Grab those tabs and pull them in and then bend them. Okay, we doink that up a little bit. This goes on here, and then here's the tricky part, apparently. Let's see, take this off. There 
there's a little hole in the side here both sides Should fit a little tighter. There we go. That goes on there. Okay. Well, I gotta solder this. I gotta do some soldering here and some wiring. Oh, yeah, and I gotta put this on. Okay, let me do get the uh, soldering iron hot, and then uh, we'll get that part done. So I extended these wires here and uh, soldered them on to the terminals. Uh, watching me solder isn't really that exciting. This contact here is the hot. That needs to contact this right here. So we need to make sure that that is available so we got that um what i didn't realize is i need to take this out and this piece goes in first like that And then that needs to go under there, there, like that. So that's how that works. So you can see there's a little washer in here, or a spacer. So this is the hot side and that's the ground side. Just realized so you have some adjustments here in the front depending on how high you need that and we'll have to test this but there's two slots in there to adjust the height of that and oh we did get that right we just no, we didn't get this side right this goes over there there we go Okay, that goes like that. Okay, again, I had to make some adjustments on this part. Get that in there. There we go. So that operates properly. Okay, I um, have to get some power to this and we'll test it. Uh, and I need to sand the paint off of this to get the ground to work on the other side. So that's, that's the hot and that's the ground. So we'll just take... Okay, uh, let me get a piece of track 
and a power supply and wire this up and we'll test this and we'll test that. And I got to put the little tag on it here. Okay, I'm having a little bit of a problem here. I don't know if you can see this. This is not staying in there tight on both sides. And the problem is that I put too much paint on here and these tabs are not bending over the way they're supposed to. I can't, I even tried to like get a punch and hammer that tighter and it won't get any tighter. So the problem is that this doesn't stay in between the, uh, the railings there. So uh, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try and take these tabs out, take this railing out, clean the paint off and see if I can punch that tighter. Hopefully, I'm not gonna break these tabs off. That's what I'm worried about. So let me give this a try. I got all the uh, paint off of these tabs here. And here. So they should fit in there tighter. So we'll give this a try and cleaned out the uh, extra paint that was in the slots here. So let's see if we can get that to fit better. That seems to go in better. Hopefully these will bend over tighter. That side's a little bit tighter. This one I don't know about. Let's see if uh, that did the trick. See, that's, that's bent right there. Okay, let's see what happens here. Yeah, see that's still falling out. I've got to get that to stay in tighter. Let me see what I can do with this. Okay, so I did something I wasn't sure I wanted to do. I Well, first of all, I tried to hammer this out in the garage, put a block of wood under that side and hammered it and it didn't do anything. So I put just a tiny shim of metal underneath that tab and i did the same thing over here and i need to put that in tighter uh maybe just a dab of glue but uh that holds tighter and that's not going to come out of there so success if it works is it a dumb idea all right let's get this back together and finish testing it okay we've got a new box of cows from uh, hennings trains so let's see if they work. No, we'll take these two old ones off. We'll try those later. Try all these nice new ones. Okay, we have a little bit of adjustments to do on this. 
uh, but it's working the way it should. I don't know if this table's completely level or not. Um, the problem with the door, I'll show you the car here. Get these guys out. So you have these contacts here and here. And you have a shoe on the bottom here and here. The contact, the relay here. So what happens is when you turn that on, hold on, we got a cow in here. Well, we'll get him later. Um, so the relay here comes on when you energize it, goes down and pushes that door up like that. So if this isn't right on the contacts the way it should be, then the door is going to come down. And also have to note that this has to be open in order to let the cows out because on this side there is this little guy here that keeps the cows in the car. So if I shut the door, that slides back and keeps them in there. So this relay goes down opens the door and then it also vibrates this plate here which gets the cows through the cattle car so that's how that works now a couple of problems that i had first of all this wasn't working at all and one obviously i painted this so i had to scrape the paint off but i wasn't getting a ground to this so the ground connects here this plate goes on there and i painted it so well that there was no connection from the top plate to the bottom. I'll show you that real quick. So yeah, as you can see, this is all painted and it's isolated from here. This is the uh, positive side, which would connect here. This tab touches this and gives you power to this side. And then that's the ground which gives you power to that side. So what I did is right here, scrape some of the paint off of it. So it would contact this right here and give us a ground, okay? Now, another problem I had was this did not have any, these little felt tabs I put on there. They go on the bottom of uh, like a piece of furniture, like a chair or a uh, table or something. And I think I need to make something that's a little bit shorter. But when I started, there was no tabs on there. And what was happening, this would just sit flat on here and then nothing would vibrate. So it would just make a little bit of noise and nothing was going on. So you got to put some tabs on there to keep that up, to give it a place to vibrate. Uh, the other thing that happens when you energize this relay here with the power, here I can show you real quick. See this lever goes up and allows this to go down. And you can adjust the height of it with this. That's all that that screw does is adjust the height of this lever and how far these go down. So if you screw that in, then it won't go up as high. Then they're like that. If you let the screw out, then it'll come up higher and line up with your car. So that's an adjustment. Make sure you have your tabs. Make sure you're grounded. On this guy here, um, this doesn't get painted. All you do is clean it with like some steel wool or something, make it good and smooth. And I put a drop of uh, CRC 226 on there. <clears throat> just to give it a little, I get a little extra on there, just to give it something a little bit slippery, keep it smooth. I guess you could use like silicone, maybe WD-40, I don't know, something like that, just uh, on here, and also on the, uh, the track inside the car. So the only other thing to show you, as you see, there's slots in the back here, and also on the front. And you got tabs here, 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 and here. And you select which ones you want to use. And this is the older 027 track. If you have O track, O track is going to be a little bit higher. So you want this to set up a little bit higher. 
So for this, we want it to sit lower. Like that. And then you screw this in tight. Now I'll screw it in. That's probably it, thanks. Okay. And on this side here, if you were using the O-Track that's higher, you would need like a little metal plate that screws onto there to raise that up a little bit. And of course, if you put that plate on, then you would have to scrape some of that paint off so that it gets a good connection on there. Okay, so I got to play around with this a little bit, maybe adjust the height of this, maybe replace those felt tabs, maybe get this running a little bit smoother. I got this mostly working for now. Uh, the biggest problems I'm having is these ramps going down all the way and lining up with the, uh, the car here. And then sometimes the cows either don't make it into the box car or don't come out. And sometimes they get stuck uh, going around and sometimes they fall over. So let's see if it works for me now. So let's see if I can make it out. Oh, and we got one stuck in there. Yeah, this guy is not wanting to come around. See if the next one pushes them out. Okay, I would call that mostly successful. I guess we have one guy that fell, and these were having a little bit of a problem coming out. Uh, this is not perfectly level. And this isn't the best piece of track. So for the most part, I would say it works. And it's in good shape. I'll play around with it a little bit more. See if I can get it more consistent. So we'll move on to the milk jug car. This was working before I painted it. So it should be working still. Because I didn't do anything with the car. All I did was paint the platform here. Okay, we lost one. Put them back in there. There you go. That works pretty good. There is a height adjustment on here, and this is actually O-Track, so you want that to be up higher. So, I didn't paint the stairs. I thought they looked pretty good. There's you know, a little bit of paint missing, but you and me are the only two that are going to know that. But I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so there's two great accessories there. The 3656 cattle corral, the 3656 cattle car, the automatic refrigerated milk bottle car, and the milk bottle car platform. I also got this uh, UCS track at a train show for I think $2 for that whole set. So let's see, we paid $5 for the cattle corral, $10 for the car. $5 for this car, 
dollar for this. Yes, one dollar. And I bought extra milk jugs. I think I paid seven or eight dollars for those from Hennings. And I bought myself a box of nine cattle for ten dollars at Hennings. So at about forty-nine dollars plus some paint. I think I had at least $100 worth of fun here. Maybe $200 worth of fun. So, great accessories. If you have any problems with them, let me know. There's a lot of adjustments to be made on some of these. It takes a little bit of fooling around with them to get them to work. But I think they're great. I love these old accessories. All right, put your comments down there. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have one of these. And thank you very much for watching. My next projects are a light beacon. I paid a whole dollar for this. So, work on that next. And the barrel loader. I paid $5 for that.